your friends to start emailing the radio station. Uh, go to Facebook and instant message them. But you got to do it more than once. You got to do it over a couple week period, at least once a week, and and get as many people as you can. That's what gets the stations to want to carry a show. Hint, hint. Anyway, we're going to go on break, and after the break, James is going to be doing the news, and then we have our guest, Tom Whitmore, talking about well UFOs. So stay tuned. Night Dreams Talk Radio Network brings you the World Paranormal News with James Creechbaum. Now, the latest news. Think we just lost James. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, you, you, you're you supposed to be doing the news. Yeah, something happened there. I don't know what happened. I'll just go right into it now, but I don't know what was going on. This is Night Dreams Talk Radio Network News. I'm James Kreisbaum. Anyway, a big black bird man observed in a Chicago West Inglewood backyard. The witness goes on and states that on Wednesday, February 26, 2020, at early dawn, estimated between 5.30 and 6 a.m., his mother was awoken by footsteps on the roof of their second-floor apartment. She looked out the window into the backyard and observed a big black bird man landing in the backyard along a six-foot fence. It was hopping and walking about as if it was chasing something. It then spread its wings and bound over the fence into an adjacent lot. The height was about six foot compared to the fence, and the wings were about 12 foot in width. Judging by the width of the double gate, each gate is 5 foot 10 wide. It was standing near. The wing shape was under underdetermined through it, though it seemed it to be broad and gargoyle-like. There were no distinguishable features on the body other than it was standing on the double-toed clawed feet with a small appendage extending from the back of the foot, a possible spur. Now, at the time... And then later in the morning, the witness was able to obtain photos of the tracks in the snow near the fence and in the backyard, as well as the line of tracks in the adjacent lot. He estimates that the length of the tracks are comparable to the length of the size of a 11 man's shoe, and that the distant stride of the tracks is three to four feet at the longest. A really fast UFO was filmed in Louisville, Kentucky. And that was on March 2nd. Yeah, the witness just goes on to say it was a huge, bright UFO with orbs looking thing and were recorded flying over the night sky above Louisville and Kentucky on the 2nd. Uh, it looked like fireballs in the sky going very fast in the same direction. Then there were all 12 of them at one time doing this. U.S. Air Force couldn't explain mystery drones. A newly released email showed that officials at F.E. Warren Air Force Base did not know who was behind the Colorado drones. Back at the end of December of 2019, reports emerged of a fleet of unidentified drones operating in Colorado's Phillips and Yuma counties between 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. in the evening. Now, a series of emails obtained through a Freedom of Information Act request have offered a unique insight into what was happening behind the scenes at F.E. Warren Air Force Base at the time. The communications sent back and forth between the officials revealed that. Even at the highest level, an explanation for the mysterious drone activity remained surprisingly elusive. SETI at-home project goes into hibernation. SETI's long-running in intuitive to use idle home computers to process data in the hunt for aliens has been halted. Launched all the way back in, on March or May 17, 1999, City at Home worked by asking participants to run a special piece of software on their computer so that when the machine was otherwise idle, the spare processing power could be used to process astronomical data pertaining to research for alien life. Scientifically, we're at the point of diminishing returns. Basically, we're analyzed 
all the data we now we need for now, said he wrote. It's a lot of work for us to manage the distributed processing of data. We need to focus on completing the back-end analysis of the results we already have and writing this up in a scientific journal paper. We're extremely grateful to all our volunteers for supporting us in many ways during the past 20 years. Without you, we would be no SETI at home. If you have a news story you want us to share on Night Dreams Talk Radio, contact us at James Night Dreams Talk Radio News at gmail.com. You are listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio Network from our compound to you worldwide with your host, Gary Anderson. And that is me. Well, we're going to get Tom uh, on the air. We're going to talk about MJ 12, UFOs, and all that stuff here. As soon as we get them on here on Night Dreams Talk Radio. Ah, what can I say? Well, hi hi there, uh, Tom. How you doing? Gary from Night Dreams Talk Radio, my friend. How you doing, Gary? I am doing good. How about yourself? It's been a while since we talked. Yeah, I'm doing I'm doing well. Thank you. I'm working hard. Well, what have more information have you been finding and digging up there? Well, I uh I have a very good friend, um, Robert M. Wood, who I've known for years. He's a dear friend, and he's been a uh, he's been a board member on MUFON along with me. But uh, he's 92 years old, and I decided to go out and visit him uh, a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago. And Robert Wood did a lot of uh, research with his son, Ryan Wood, on the MJ-12 documents. And uh, I... Uh, succeeded in convincing him to let me to lend me uh, virtually his entire collection of his personal collection of documents which is about eight boxes and uh, I've gone through I've just finished going through the first box and so I'm going through a large number of documents that are um, that they retrieved years ago from the National Archives uh, to, to do a lot with um, the uh, 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 Joint um, Research and Development Board and a lot of other government and military organizations where they, they captured a lot of lists of top-level people working in the field, you know, in the, in the area between 1945 and 1950. So I've been going through a lot of documents. That sounds like it. You and, know, I was going to say, he's going to be on the show on the 16th. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, that's great. Maybe we should be on together. (laughs) Well, maybe we can arrange that. Yeah. um, And, you know, I've been working on other things, too. Uh, There was, um, uh, I did uh, work on, well, I don't want to sound boring just talking about documents, but that's what I deal with, okay? And and, uh, I was um, uh, looking at one document that, that Stan Friedman had come up with that was that, paralleled the language uh, that was used in the Cutler 20 memo. It has a phrase called that, that uh, goes like uh, your, your concurrence with the above arrangements is, is assumed. And he had another document that had a phrase like that in it. And I went to the, well, in, in his book, he said that the, well, in the copy of the document that Sam Friedman had, he said that it was from the Library of Congress. So I went to the Library of Congress to see if I could confirm that, but I didn't find it in, in the box, and I even had an archivist do some extra searching for, it, for me, and I haven't been able to locate it. So, you know, I do things like that. Well, that I sounds, also had a... It sounds like it keeps uh, you very busy, Tom. Oh, yeah. I'm working really hard. So. Um, but, I, you know, I mean, I can talk about this all day. I've got all kinds of topics I can talk about. Um, you kind of caught me off guard there because I don't have my list in front of me. Well, that's no problem. Hey, that's what a talk show host does. It, it, I hate to say it. I mean, you know, one thing is because you are noted for MJ-12. And, you know, we know that you were with MUFON at one point as an investigator. I mean, you know, that's what we need to get out here tonight. A little bit more than we have when you've been on before. And, and again, you're going through all these documents. What do you think? How how many of them do you feel are phony documents or real ones? 
Well, it's it's I, I, the impression I'm getting is that um, maybe ten percent of them are real. And the reason why I say that is I'm I'm seeing a lot of what appears to me to be retypes of things, and I'm seeing a lot of um, uh, stamping that that doesn't it doesn't look normal to me. Now I'm not a document expert. I'm I'm fairly new at this myself, but uh, uh, when I look at the at the the best copies that Robert Wood had of, and, and these most of these documents come from from Timothy Cooper. Uh, when I look at these documents, I just have a lot of questions about them. Now, the content, the information in the documents is very, very interesting. But but the appearance of the documents in too many instances uh, looks to me like um, like there have been alterations. Now. Uh, they, there are some things that there's one thing that occurred to me today is that uh, I'm not in going. I've gone through hundreds and hundreds of documents, and I don't mean to brag, but that's what I do. And I'm not seeing any other teams being labeled the way Majestic 12 was. The the government teams that I'm seeing, or the government groups that are being named, have formal names like the joint research and or the uh, the joint chiefs of staff or the armed forces special weapons project or the research and development board you know they're formal names i'm not seeing any things like majestic 12 or the magnificent seven or the dirty dozen or anything like that you know what i mean that is interesting i uh, do you think some of these documents were put in there for misinformation, for people, you know, to request it under the Freedom of Information Act to just spread more disinformation and confusion. Well, there there are a couple of possibilities there, Gary. Um, what it, there's a possibility that there are people that want to get certain information out to the public because they feel like the government has been too secretive, or these groups have been too secretive. And that some of this information needs to get out, but they need to do it in a way that can't be traced back to them and they can't get charged with, you know, uh, breaking a security of. Uh, on the other hand, there may be um, uh, there may be motivations to keep the UFO community confused. And and that could be from quasi government sources or it could be from private individuals. And I, I think there is an element of the private of a private individual, one or more private individuals, engaging in an outright hoax. But I don't, I don't subscribe to the view that all of the MJ12 activity, or what I consider to be MJ12 activity, is is purely private hoaxing. Huh. Interesting. Have Have you found any that you look at and you could just immediately tell it was a hoax? Well, some of them look much less um, authentic to me now. For example, the uh, Eisenhower briefing document it is has so many things wrong with it that when I look at it now, it, it doesn't look nearly as authentic as as it seemed to look when it first came out. But uh, you know, the date format's always been been a problem with that, um, and you have certain obvious um, errors like. Uh, Rear Admiral Hill Ketter being referred to as Admiral, and I've seen actual genuine documents where he's properly referred to as Rear Admiral Hill and Ketter, and 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 yet on the Eisenhower briefing document, he's referred to as Admiral, and that's that's not that's not a correct uh, uh, for, format. And uh, but another point that I like to I'd like to bring up is that the MJ the Eisenhower briefing document and the MJ12 group itself if it existed, was not a military group. And so the format and the, the style of the documents may not be military style, okay? Because now it was weighted toward the military. There were admirals and generals on there, but there, there were several uh, high-level scientists. There's a, a civilian um, secretary of defense, possibly uh, the uh, director of the CIA, 